physics uh, course the whole month uh, what we are going to cover now. so we are going to cover hand eye coordination like line drawings we are going to do bird stick drawings and bird head and body gesture drawing so this is what we are going to cover uh, the whole whole of this month so week one we have the basics of drawing so every artist when they start off when they go to college or they go to school they do certain kind of exercises that we need to do every day it's not a physical exercise but a drawing exercise like so that's what we are going to cover on week one like week two we are going to do line drawings contour drawing some observation exercises will be there so that's what we are going to do on week two and week three we have bird stick drawings that's what we'll do like uh, different kinds of birds are there uh, all over india like we have more than 1000 species of uh, birds so i've classified them into different uh, categories and made them into stick drawings so we'll be doing that so i'll be showing that manual also after this but uh, just give a quick run through what we are going to do and fourth week we are going to do head and body gestures of birds so this is what we are going to do so uh, i will stop sharing so this is a quick run through i will show the manual that you'll be receiving like it's a email you will be receiving every week and you will be receiving assignments also for the entire week which you need to do like so uh, you will have to do like uh, maybe work an hour uh, every week that will help you to work on the assignment so this is the first week manual this kind of pdf you will be receiving every week so this is the exercise we will be discussing about this uh, today so uh, hand eye coordination so we will be starting with line how to draw lines and the assignments and what is the importance of lines and uh, i made this completely with line so every pdf will have one of my artwork so this is the first week manual so every week you will be receiving this kind of manual so let's go through the second week manual as well i will share it this is the second week manual so we'll be doing uh, smaller lines we'll be covering 2d and 3d so what is and different kinds of grips so art is usually like we like we different grips for different kinds of mark making so that we'll be covering then we have contour drawing continuous drawing then we have a line drawing so this is week 2 Let me share the week three. So week three, what will we do? So this is week three. So we'll be doing stick drawings. So uh, various birds are there all over, like all all over India. We have more than thousand three hundred species of birds. So what I've done, I've uh, classified them into various categories like ground birds, then uh, peacock and ducks and then the herons and cranes so we'll be working on stick drawings like we then finches so these kind of stick drawings will be working in the third week so the stick drawings actually help us in drawing the birds in various uh, not only uh, from a photograph even from imagination also you can actually draw birds so that's what the stick drawing helps us to do and the fourth week so fourth week will be covering body part of birds uh, and inside structure how the bird looks inside from the inside then the body parts of the head like uh, the head parts and various perspective like front facing front profile then uh, step by step of side profile then the three fourth profile how the bird said this done three fourth and then facing down so step by step i given in the manual so i'll be uh, explaining how it's done and do a small demo also and show how it's done and the body also like how the bird body and the wing uh, parts we'll be discussing that then tail feathers how the tail feather looks So this is what we'll be covering the entire month. Like I've just given you an overview of uh, what we're going to cover the entire month and what we can look forward to. So uh, I think we can go to week one. Like uh, 
So I will share the PDF and we'll go through the week one exercises. And don't hesitate to like stop me in between. Like uh, you want uh, to ask some questions, like uh, feel free to ask. Uh, don't hesitate because uh, clearing the doubts uh, is very important. Yeah. So let's go to week one. Like uh, so, these kind of PDF you'll be uh, receiving through email, and it will have assignments as well. So uh, for the week one, like I mentioned in the group, we need two uh, B or four B pencil. Either one will work. Like and we need plain sheets. So plain sheets, it can be lower GSM, don't uh, go for higher GSM plain sheets and a ruler, we need ruler. In case you're not familiar with uh, drawing lines, then uh, ruler is important. So this is an important exercise, like uh, most of the artists who start or even who are experts also tend to ignore this exercise, but it's a very important exercise. Like we need to do it uh, daily if possible or whenever possible. If we do these exercises, it's very important. So this exercise is a hand-eye coordination exercise. So basically it helps you to like uh, draw correctly or sketch correctly. So most of the artists or who start in the beginning, they have an idea or they see something, they are not able to draw it. That is because of lack of hand-eye coordination. So here uh, I've given the instructions. So use the ruler. I'll be giving a demo also. Uh, like once I go through this PDF, like I'll be showing a demo also of how we can do this. So use the ruler to draw the first guiding line straight. And later you can try and draw the uh, using the guiding line as your reference. You can try and draw the line freehand. So uh, freehand meaning like uh, no other tools to be used except for pencil and your paper. So while drawing lines, keep your palm on the sheet. So it should not lift the palm uh, from the sheet. This is very important. If you start lifting your palm from the sheet, then uh, you start using your shoulder, then the ex exercise uh, it becomes a little bit easy and it's not that effective. And don't use razor. Like if you stop in between a line, then you stop drawing that line. Then you go to the next line. So don't continue drawing that line. So we have to do horizontal line. So for horizontal line, use the paper in the horizontal uh, composition only. Don't keep the paper vertical. So keep the sheet that you're drawing. A4 sheet is what I was like A4 sheet. If you draw, it's enough. If you're doing it in a bigger sheet also, it's fine. Like it's even no better. So uh, I'll be showing a demo, like how we need to do this and everything. So, and place your sheet horizontally, like don't place your sheet diagonally. So, uh, so why I say this way? Let's say you are drawing well, like uh, you reach the professional level where you are, you know, getting commission works and all that thing. Someone invites you to actually make a wall mural. A wall, no, you cannot move it diagonally. You cannot move it in different direction. So that's the reason. Like when you start off, when you're uh, starting off. Uh, making these exercises or working uh, initially, you start with good habit play. So wall, you cannot move it diagonally. Like if you want, the wall is not good, it's not mover. It's a fixed uh, thing. So if you've been used to keeping the sheet uh, diagonally and sketching or drawing and making these kind of markings, like uh, you'll be uh, cultivating that kind of a bad habit. The same thing continues when you're going to make a mural also. So you'll be struggling that time. And even in case of larger canvas also, if you're working, it's very difficult to move it diagonally and work. So when you start off with film, start with uh, you no know, good habits. So uh, this is what I want to say, and vertical lines. So when you're drawing vertical lines, place the sheet vertically, don't place it horizontally. Place it vertically and draw vertical line. So draw it in full sheet uh, and the same instruction applies like So uh, use a ruler to make a guiding line. And once you start drawing the line, uh, don't lift the palm from the sheet. So diagonal line, same way. You draw the diagonal line, you start keep the sheet uh, horizontally and start drawing the line. So use the, when you start getting to the middle of the page, it becomes a little bit difficult. Use the ruler, like every fourth or fifth line, you can use the ruler to make a guiding line if you're struggling with making diagonal lines. 
And the last one we have is the curves. The curves in two different directions. So, uh, so we have to draw this also in one single, like uh, this curve will be in a single sheet, make the sheet in vertical format. Same for this also, like keep the sheet in vertical format and draw the curves. So this is what we have for the first week. Like So uh, first week, I don't want to give too many assignments or not give uh, really tough, uh, you know, like uh, syllabus, like for keeping it very simple. And if someone is starting off also, uh, so this is how we start off. Like, so when I started also, I started this way. I did this for four to five years. Like every day I used to draw these kind of lines. I do it occasionally now. I don't do it regularly, but for the first four to five years, I've done this regularly every day I've done it. Like, so uh, is this clear? Like uh, how we do it? I'll be showing a demo also. Like. Uh, so you can watch the demo also, and uh, if you have any question, it will be clear. But until now, is it clear, like how we have to do this? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, OK. So here I have a suggestion also. Every PDF, I have certain suggestions also. So it's a good practice to do this daily. So the assignment is there. That doesn't mean like you have, uh, you know, we have session on Friday. So Thursday, you sit and do the sheets like continuously. Like, don't stress yourself that day. You uh, take make a time, like it can be 40 minutes is what I'm thinking. Like uh, if you do 40 minutes every day, you can do five sheets. Like So uh, I've tested this. Uh, so in A4 size sheet, it should not take you more than 40 minutes. So keep aside uh, 40 minutes every day and work on it. So we'll go to the assignment, like this kind of assignment you will receive uh, every week to work on. This assignment is not only for this uh, you know, course, it's like even after the one month course, you want to improve on your drawing skills, like you want to do exercises, uh, like these assignments, you can still continue doing it. You will definitely uh, see the improvement in your drawing and sketching skills. So draw five sheets every day. This is what is the first assignment. Uh, and like I said, like for the horizontal one, keep the format in horizontal, uh, you know, format for the horizontal lines. For the vertical for uh, line, keep the sheet in vertical. I'll be showing it as a demo also. Just I want to like uh, and do the lines in full sheet. Like so, for five sheets every day, like that you do, and date all the sheets. Like so, this is also something like artists don't do. Like it can be a sketch or it can be a study, it can be a finished work also. None of the artists in today's period I've seen, like they date their work. Like. So uh, how, uh, like in my presentation, how I knew like this uh, year I've done this work, like uh, how I improved, I can self-analyze or self, uh, you know, like critique myself also because I've dated all my work. Like. So otherwise I will never know. So date all the sheets so you can, uh, you know, self critique or self analyze whether you are improving, which kind of lines you need to work more. So this is very important for all artists. Right? And if any one of you uh, are interested in reading articles, right? so I've given a link, like if you go to this link, uh, you can see like uh, it takes you to an article about line drawing. Like, so. Uh, Usually there is a lot of misconception, like uh, saying that, you know, colors or textures and like all kinds of works, uh, they are more, uh, you know, like uh, they are compared to line drawings, no? they carry more value or that kind of uh, misconception is there. But this article talks about the like, uh, importance of line drawing and how it evolved, like um, it, it's a very good article, like if you're into reading, so I would definitely suggest like uh, you go to this uh, article. It will give an idea about line drawings and how it has evolved, who are the artists who worked on it and what kind of works they have done. So uh, this article is very interesting. So I've given a suggestion on the article also. So uh, if everything is clear now, like I'll just uh, stop the sharing and I'll switch back to my... Uh, like desktop, like uh, my draw, drawing board. 
like uh, just give me two minutes i'll just switch to my uh, drawing board next. so is everything clear the assignments and uh, how we are supposed to do it and is everything clear yeah yes sir all right fine so i'll i'll just stop my camera now and i'm going to switch back to uh, my uh, drawing board so you can see my drawing board just give me a few seconds i'll just uh, come like start my video again where you can see my drawing board So, uh, Atharva, I know you joined, the, uh, you had to drop off and you just joined back, so just for your benefit. Um, Prasad just gave an overview of uh, how the course structure will be for next uh, you know, five weeks and uh, what we are focusing on today. And he has actually Thanks. prepared a PDF uh, for each week that he'll share, he'll share with you guys in email. So don't worry, you haven't missed much. You just follow uh, the session right now. He's going to give you some demonstration of the work. And then most likely you guys will also be practicing it in some time. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Thank you. So can you guys see my uh, drawing board? Is it yes. visible? Yes. Yeah, okay. we can see. All right. So we'll go to the first exercise. So uh, first exercise would be like drawing horizontal lines. So I'll create the sheet horizontally. Like uh, so you want to draw the line. That way this helps you to practice more. Don't keep the sheet vertically. So keep the sheet horizontal. The horizontal format, and like I said, like uh, so, when you start, you use the rulers and make the guiding line. So, so use the ruler always. Like if you are doing this for the first time and you're not used to drawing lines and all that, this is very useful. So use the ruler. So this is your guiding line. So this is what you need to try and replicate your sending signals to your brain. That this is what I need to like. Uh, this is what I need to replicate. Like. So what I said about the formula. So once you start. So you don't lift your palm like so if you see now i have not lifted my palm from the sheet so once i started like i'm just going and drawing it continuously so all these exercises that we are going to work like they are all interrelated like they will like the second week there is an exercise related to this continuous drawing way. the contour drawing so these lines will help you when you're going to do contour drawing. Prasad, yeah. uh, can you move your sheet slightly towards right? Yeah, you just did a uh, little more, little more towards right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my right means maybe your left it is. Uh, no, not this side, the other side. Yeah, yeah. it's actually your right too. Yeah, right. yeah, like from the beginning. Yeah. yeah. 
even more uh, more if you could move yes yes that's good when you start good continuous so what happens like uh, you are getting very very length so then you make another guiding line so you are sending a signal to your brain again saying that we need to draw a straight line not very very line so again you try and try and draw the lines as close as possible prasad i didn't uh, get one point of yours you're saying that we should keep the sheet uh, not at an angle should we should keep it absolutely no, keep it like this yeah i normally keep it like this this is not okay or what is the issue that is not a good practice because like i gave an example right if you are doing a wall mural okay the wall is a lengthy wall like so you cannot turn the wall into a different direction and do like so if you start off with these kind of practices mm. then uh, like as you progress right like there will be a situation where you will be like in the case of wall mural you will have to draw a horizontal line in the same format like that's not a movable object in case of bigger canvas also let's say you are doing a 8 feet or 10 feet canvas mm. so you have A portion in that canvas where which has lot of like uh, horizontal lines, so you cannot move the canvas into different direction that way. So it always when you start off, start with good practices. Like it's not a good practice as per me. Like what I've learned and the artists who have taught me, you know, they taught me the same way. Like I am sharing the same thing. Like the same way you. So if you see now, I'm not lifting my palm also. So that way, I'm not using too much of my shoulder leg. So once you lift the palm, right, you will start using your shoulder and making the lines now become very easy. So is this clear? How we need to draw the horizontal line, everyone? Yeah. All right. So vertical line. Leg. So next, let's go to the vertical line. So now place the sheet vertically. So don't worry if you are getting very very lines. Don't worry. Initially it happens, but uh, as time goes, no, 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 no. So draw a guiding line first, and then you try and replicate that guiding line. So draw as close as possible. And see the pressure now. It's single pressure point. Like I'm not uh, changing the pressure point also. It's a single pressure point. Like so, how 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 I started? I'm going with the same pressure point. i'm not changing the line is not becoming thin like it's not becoming dark it's not becoming light like same pressure and so this is also getting fourth line or fifth line and becoming very very So use another guiding line. Like make another guiding line. So we give another indication, saying that let's get back and make a straight line. Do so it as close as possible. So if you see, you know. Like even if the world is falling apart, let's say the you are having something in your life that is not working out, something is not going right. Don't worry about all those things. Even the world is falling apart. No? You just concentrate on the single line for the moment. You don't think about anything else. Just think about this line. It's only you and the line. That's all. That's all you need to concentrate. 
So is this clear? How we are going to make the vertical line? This uh, board of yours is it uh, flat or is it vertical? So uh, the board, uh, let me see if I can show you. Uh, like the board is uh, flat only. It's a horizontal board. One second, let me zoom out. Like so, you can see the board, no? It's uh, it's on your table, is it? Yeah, yeah, it's on my table. Okay, okay. No, I was just trying to understand how uh, you placed it. Is it like a uh, 45 degree or uh, like a drawing board or drafting board? Almost like a drafting board only. So what I've done, I, on the keyboard uh, area where I keep my keyboard, I placed a drawing board like that's all. Okay. Yeah. So is this clear? Like how we draw the vertical line, horizontal line? Uh, Prasad, I have a question. Uh, so what should be the pace? Like you can either draw very fast or, you know, yeah, very slow. Fast, like, so you, you've seen how I draw the vertical line, right? So it's right. a single pace, like con concentration, how I started. Don't do it too fast also. Don't do it too slow. If you do it too slow to uh, make complete the one sheet, like you will take ages. Right? So have a constant pace. Don't do it too fast also. Because when you're doing it too fast, no, there is no control. Right? Right, right, right. Yeah, I was just trying to do one straight line. It yeah. didn't work. So, I, okay, sure. Thanks. So, have, it, have a constant speed. Like, don't do it too fast or don't do it too slow also. So, we'll go to the diagonal lines again. Like, uh, if you see, uh, the starting diagonal line is very easy. Like, so, it's a smaller line. You can do it very easily. But as and when you are going to make the diagonal line and go to the middle of the page, no? is going to get a little bit tougher. So do it as close as possible because the whole idea is not to complete the assignment and submit it. Like the whole idea is to practice more, so to improve. So here I'm not moving, like I'm not lifting the palm, but you can definitely move the palm. So that is also another question I usually get, like you can move the palm, but you should not lift it like. Uh, Prasad, do you think keeping a vertical easel um, and then drawing on that? Vertical will be very difficult. Okay. Uh, like I said, uh, this uh, drawing board, I kept it on my uh, keyboard uh, stand. So it's mm -hmm. almost like a 45 degree thing. So if okay. you draw this vertically, uh, it's going to be a little bit difficult because your shoulders will be like uh, like 40 minutes now. Uh, you'll be like using your shoulders on that leg. So uh, mm -hmm. starting board or drawing board, if you're doing it like easier. Like even you can place it horizontally on the table also and do it like the four years side is now. Like I did it keeping it horizontally only, but there is a drawback like. So uh, you might get neck pain like or uh, back pain like if you're doing it for a prolonged period like. Uh, so always use it on a drawing board or a drafting board. You can place it at a 45 degree angle. And that is always good practice even when you're drawing also. Like. I think yeah, the posture is always a problem the for artists. If you are not, you are not sitting in proper posture, huh? you will get uh, neck pain or like back pain. Definitely. Hmm. Uh, I also want to check if like how you know Manish is sharing his table. Um, if even others want to show what they are practicing, that will be that will be good actually. Maybe Prasad can also have a look at that. Mm. No, <laughs> Ambika tried to show, but yeah, uh, no, maybe actually doing, uh, yeah, keeping your camera on your page may help, may help a little. I don't know how Manish is doing. It's a complicated setup. <laughs> oh, is that okay? <laughs> I've done it to my son for his uh, classes.
uh, because he's taking uh, online classes, so I'm using his setup actually right now. Mm -hmm. So even mine, like the one you're seeing, right? it's from a DSL, DSLR camera. It's not the normal camera that you're seeing, like the video that is... Uh, yeah, that's why your lines are looking so clear and visible. It's yeah. from a DSLR feeling, yeah. so... Mm -hmm. Video. Yeah, but and at any point, anyone wants to show? I mean, just ask. So is this clear? Sure. Like how we do the diagonal line? Is it clear? Any doubts you have? Prerna? hello. Yeah, uh, I just want to show yeah. my lines. I don't know how it is getting curved. Somehow, I'll just show it. Uh, Who is this? I can't. Oh, okay. Advaita. Yes. Yeah. Can you um, see it? <laughs> uh, Prasad, do you want to have a look at? Okay. Actually, let me put you on spotlight. Actually, just add spotlight here. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm get, I'm going very fast, I guess. So. Yeah, maybe you're going fast, but it, it comes with practice. Like it's not going to happen within one day. Uh -huh. like okay. For me also, na, I've lost touch. Like I'm not doing it regularly, so my lines also not that great. But my vertical lines are good because I practice vertical lines uh, very often. Okay. Uh, so don't go too fast. The pace should be same. And none of the lines are going like light dark, light dark. So it's really important. It should have the same. Uh, when you start dark, you go fully dark. Actually, yeah, let's do that. I think Manish has a good uh, idea, suggestion that once you're done with the whole page, then we can all show, yeah. you know, at once to everyone. Just, yeah. But don't do the assignments this way. Like I'm just giving for demo sake only. Do the diagonal on full sheet. So don't do like, okay, so start with a little bit horizontal, little bit vertical and some diagonal. I'll do like everything in one sheet, like don't do that way. Separate sheets you do it. So is this clear how we are going to do the diagonal line? So you can also use like if it's going very right, you use the ruler, like make a guiding line, this is called a guiding line. You make the guiding line and use it as a reference point, and then you do it. All right. And uh, and yeah, everyone is posting on on the WhatsApp group, so which is good. We can see actually. And yeah, Manish, your uh, setup is crazy. We need to know that. <laughs> so uh, if this is clear, ma, we go to the curve line. Should we go to the curves? Yeah. Yeah, do the curves. So here also the curves, the end ones are pretty easy. Right. And as you go to the middle of the page, the curves also become a little bit tougher. Yeah. Sir, could you just uh, pull your paper a little up? I can zoom in then. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Zooming is better. I can zoom in. Earlier was better. I would like to see how you're curving it. Yeah. Yeah. So, Prasad, moving your page slightly up so that lower part is visible. Yeah. That is better. Yes. yes. Thank you. Now you can see, right? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Between the curved lines uh, on a fresh sheet, right? So it'll be in a bigger A4 sheet, right? Yeah. So uh, let me actually take all the lines we are going to do that way only. Yes, yes, thank you. Like, uh, don't do it in a sheet like how I'm just doing it for reference purpose only. Yeah, it's different when it's small, but when you do it in a big sheet, it's totally different. This is an A4 size sheet only. Yes. Do it in a fresh sheet. So initial curves are pretty easy. Like when you're starting, like it will be easier. But when you go to the middle of the sheet, it will get tougher. So like I said, you can move the palm, but don't lift it from the sheet. Like so that's very important.
So here for the guiding line, you can use a compass. If you have a compass, you can use the compass to make a guiding line. Like uh, that will help me. For so ruler, we cannot make a curve. You can use a compass. And you can make a guiding line to follow it. So is this clear how we work on the curves? Yes, thank you. Yeah. So same way we do it on the other side also. If we start in a new sheet. So both sides are going to do like two different kinds of curves. One curve moving like towards your body, the other curve moving away from your body. So you might be wondering why we are doing all these things like we enrolled for a drawing class and sketching class. So why are you making us do these things? No? Because all these exercises and what you're going to do are going to be like in the other assignments and exercises you're going to do. These exercises are only going to help you in those assignments also. So what we're going to do in the next class and the class after that. So all these things will be like these lines only going to help us there. I think it's a good exercise to train your mind. So it's just, you know, and get yourself in the flow of drawing. Again, 40 minutes, imagine like every day, 40 minutes you're spending making art. Like, or even if it's just lines also, like that also you are uh, learning time management. And you are setting aside some time for art also. So this helps you, like, uh, you know, when you are making art, uh, you keep a certain time. It can be early morning. It can be late night also. Like you can set a time. So is this clear? How we are going to do the curves on both directions. Like don't do like in this sheet, do it in a fresh sheet. Is it clear, everyone? Hello. Yeah, right. it's clear. Thanks for suggesting the compass. I took it out after 20 years. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a very nice tool. Like we can uh, use it for making the guiding line for the curves. Like, so even if you have a protractor, this uh, smaller curves you can use. But compass, you can make a bigger curve also. Sad, uh, I, I yeah. just realized that it is... Uh, Easier not to lift the palm when you are drawing the straight lines, but but you at least I tend to kind of you know uh, lift my palm and lift your palm anywhere like in this exercise. No, you can move it like how I'm moving. Okay, but don't lift it like if you lift now, then you are going to use your shoulder. Like once you start using your shoulder, no, this exercise becomes very easy, and then like, you'll do it faster also. When you do it faster, no, there is very less control over your mind. So, Correct. Correct. So anything we have very less control no, is not very good. So we need mm -hmm. to have control. Manish has asked me like how I do the field notes, like he wants to know, like how I take the field notes. So maybe I will share one of my sketchbook, no? field sketchbook I can share and you can see it. So do we have any questions, guys? Like uh, regarding the assignments and exercises we need to do for the coming week. Like, uh, Prasad, I have a question, a rather basic one. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. What should be the distance between the tip of the pencil and my fingers? Like, 
uh, you know, like should I hold it too close to the tip or like what is the right? Or, is there a... Don't hold it like this also because this is like uh, you can see the pencil, no? Correct. Yeah, don't hold it too close also. Like don't hold it too far also. Like if you are holding this way, na, then like there is very less control. Like so, hold somewhere in midway. Like don't go here also. You will not have control here also. If you hold, you won't have control. So it it should be somewhere in midway that you can hold. And don't hold it too tightly also. Like so, your fingers start aching. I've seen that with many artists. Like they get marks here, like in your finger, no? They hold it so tightly, like that you, they start getting marks on their finger. Like don't hold it that that tightly also. Like be relaxed. It's a relaxation exercise, not like a punishment thing. So it's not like an imposition, no? Like don't take it. Thanks, Prasad. Yeah, welcome. So anyone else have any any other question? Uh, one question. So, it doesn't matter whether the pencil is uh, blunt. The tip of the pencil also is blunt, right? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. But pressure, no? You need to keep the same pressure. Like uh, you can't uh, put different pressure. Right? So that you have to be very careful. If it's very sharp, also, like uh, you will actually end up tearing the sheet also. So don't keep it too sharp. Also, here you need to make a note. Like once you start. Use the same pressure, like so. It should be uniform, like it shouldn't be thin, dark, thin, dark. If you're doing thin, dark, that means you're, like, you're not having control over the pencil. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Let me see if I can show one of my sketchbooks where I can. Actually, I'm finding it easier uh, to to somehow uh, keep my hand off the, uh, especially for the circles, uh, because uh, when when I rotate like this, right, it it kind of gets out of control. I'm finding it easier to almost keep it like a vertical. Uh, I don't know whether I'm able to show properly. Yeah, yeah we can see your feet. Yeah. You know, like uh, almost keep it off and draw freely like this. Yeah. But you're keeping the sheet vertical. So once you keep it vertical, now it becomes a smaller curve. Like. But when you're going to go here, right, the mid, mid, uh, you're going to do a mid uh, curve, right? It will be a very, very big curve. So you're getting my point, right? So then basically you're saying because you're doing a big one, you need to keep your hand and just turn your hand. You can, like move. You can move your hand, like, but don't lift it from the seat. Like once you lift it, now, then your shoulder will start coming into play. Once your shoulder comes into play, now, then you will put more pressure. Like even the uh, lines also will start hiding, like it will not be uniform line. Because the shoulder is far away from the wrist. Now. Yeah, this is what we are working on currently. I will show one of my field sketch from uh, the zoo. Like Banargata Zoo, I will show you. Like, this thing, like, It's are done like uh, you can see this, right? This is a hippo. From, it's done from live uh, subject, like it's uh, not from any photograph. Like. So you see how we study them in the zoo. So this is the watercolor. Okay, I made a note like when I've done what date, date also you can see, like right? here I've done. So 
So this is one of the pencil sketch I have done. Good subject to sketch uh, in the zoo, like it hardly moves. Another sketch. This is all done on the same day. Like. So you look at these and uh, uh, on the spot you do these. On sketches. the spot, yeah. These are all done on the spot like, in Banal Gata Zoo. Very nice. I really like your uh, notebook. I'm, I'm so much in awe. I cannot explain it to you. I love it. So watercolor done on the same day. Beautiful. Gesture drawing, like these kind of gesture drawing, they keep moving the head. Like you can study them. These yeah, are this, all... this is actually one of the very um, difficult things I find. Like how. Uh, because if the subject keeps moving, how how so they will come back again? Like, so they will come back to the same posture, but by then you can do the other like the here the spotted deer no, not they don't move the, the body like they keep moving the head this way that way. So I draw the body like so this posture again the spotted deer will come. I draw the head that way. Oh okay. And more of memory also like you need to know how the head is. This is also another gesture drawing. Very nice. You see, this kind of flowers you can do. Like, uh, flowers are very good subject to draw on the field. So, here I mentioned the date, like what flower, where I've done it. Like, use the ink drawing. Um, this is a watercolor I tried. Like. This is a study from a photograph. So these kind of drawings you can do on the field. This is also one of the drawing, pen drawing album. So uh, all these, uh, the birds which are drawn using, uh, you know, the, so you don't use any reference grids, you... Uh, no, no, like on the field, no, we don't do any reference, there's no time, like everything, this is Rangan Titu, like you've been to Rangan Titu, no? you can make out like this play fashion and you'll see that like, you know it's coming. I can see your uh, uh, your stick figures in the sketch. Yes. So this is how we are going to do the stick figures also in the third week. So they help a lot when you want to just do the gesture. Yeah. Different moment, like it's moving in different direction. Phone bill is there, regret is there, painted stuff. So very nice. So let's see. So this Helen also done on the spot thing. Let me see if I can zoom out. This is done in Hoskote. So Helen, no, they well, in, in noon times they stand stationary in one position. So it's very important to know the timing also when to sketch them. Let's see. There are some watercolors also I've done, like the tree study in Hoskote of them. Watercolor. These kind of studies you can do like so this is also another study I've done in the same place, same day. So yeah, these kind of things, these are field notes. Basically, like I have another book, I'm not able small book I have where I note down the words I've seen and all that that maybe I will try and find out and share with you next time. So this is what like so I used to use a lot of charcoal, but then I moved to pen and ink. Like, so pen and ink is very uh, easy. I need not use the spray. So see, this is also one of the feet sketch from Hospote. Like, so this is a strike. It's a long tail strike. So based on this, I've done a painting also. So I mentioned long tail strike and the tail, how the beak is, what color. I just done a rough sketch. How it caught the dragonfly also. So this is how it looks like. So based on this, I've done a painting also. And see the normal from my studio, like all these uh, pigeons, we see like rock pigeons, how they are flying, like they're sitting, training, like how they sit, like how their tail feather is. So it looks very like not that great, but birds, they keep moving like it's not that easy to and this is from a specimen sparrow, like uh, dead sparrow. Now this is from India, maybe. So I'd be thinking like wildlife artists, now they do only wildlife subjects, nothing like that. So 
this is from India, me so sketch from live only, not from photograph. Now, like good subject to sketch live. When Sorry, dog, which which city are you in right now? I'm in Bangalore. Okay, all right. So this is from India, me only. They have this dog, me. So I added one fly also, me. <laughs> It becomes more interactive. Right. This way you can do a lot of things. This is from Agombe, one of the watercolors and ink. Yeah, that's it. Wow. Can you show me that, uh, the first one? Yeah, so, so, so second, there was a lady. Uh, Michelangelo. Oh yeah. my God. This, this is different. So master studies I was talking, right? So we need to do a lot of master studies. Like, uh, so these markers you're using are the Copic markers, isn't it? No, no, this is a different like, Indian ink and different. Not marker. What is the second thing you said? Indian ink and Indian ink and different. Different, I will show you. So I have it here. One second. Let me bring the different. So this is a dip pen. So you dip it in the ink and then you draw it. And and that brown color is the Indian ink. It's an Indian ink. Like you get Indian ink, black, brown, in different colors. So that the filling is done using the same pen? Yeah, yeah, same pen. You take more ink and keep going over it now. So you and how do you make it lighter if you go lighter you use water? Little bit water, use your finger. Oh, I see. Okay. So this is the sketchbook. We do a lot of studies, a lot of field work, composition studies, everything we do. So I think, uh, do we have any questions on today's class? I, I think I'll, if uh, the demo, you want any other things to be done with the demo, I can show. Or else I can switch back to my other camera.